Hi everybody, and welcome back to Oregon Explorer. I am your host, Owen Sammons, and it just so happens that today in Lexington, we have re-entered the red zone for COVID, so we're going to have our mask on for the rest of this episode. Today, I am visiting First Presbyterian Church in the heart of downtown Lexington, and my special guest is the organist here, Tina Wagoner. So thank you very much for being with me, Tina. And for all of you at home, as usual, make sure you're relaxed, pour your favorite beverage, kick up your feet, and enjoy this episode of Organ Explorer. The First Presbyterian Church of Lexington, Kentucky faces Mill Street with a sprawling campus tucked into the downtown area. Within these walls resides a marvel of early American organ building, an 1897 Kimball organ known for their glorious singing diapasons, thrilling reed choruses, and distinctive orchestral colors fully rebuilt by the Buzzard firm in 2007. The current instrument retains 25 of the original Kimball stops, ensuring the Kimball sound stayed intact. These stops are supplemented with 11 ranks of new pipework by the Bizarre firm. There is an article linked in the description that gives quite a comprehensive account of the work completed. The result is exciting to say the least. The acoustic of the room was also improved at the time, which marries beautifully with this expressive instrument. I had the joy of meeting with Tina Wagoner, organist at First Presbyterian, to chat about this magnificent instrument. I'm here at the console with Tina Wagoner. Thank you for being with me today, Tina. So why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, how long have you been here at, at uh, First Presbyterian? I think I've been here since February of 2003. Okay. So I'm about to come upon my 20 year anniversary here real soon. Wow. So you're seated at a pretty fabulous instrument right now. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the organ here. This organ is from 1897. It had a few things done to it over the years. And then in right around 2004 is when the church aggressively began looking into what are, the, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this organ that yeah. from the 1897 that Sometimes I would come in here and I would have 15 notes that just weren't playing on the organ on a Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, and of course it wasn't up to the times. We didn't have general pistons on it. Mm. Uh, I loved the sounds that it made, but it just wasn't in the 21st century mm. by uh, 2004. And so we decided not to get rid of, of the Kimball organ because the congregation loved this organ very much. Yeah. And so uh, after a couple of years of lots of homework and research, we decided to go with the Buzard company who wanted to take the, these Kimball stomps that we had which were actually 25 stops that are kept on the original 1897 organ. Okay. He took those 25 stops and then he added 10 of his own stops. Mm -hmm. And it's the voicing that truly makes a Buzard organ what it is mm -hmm. because he is, he just makes miracles happen. So he, he <laughs> took, <laughs> he took these beautiful, warm Kimball stomps and uh, made sure they were tweaked, 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 mm -hmm. and beautifully voiced. And then, of course, he, he knew which of his own uh, stomps 
would sound great with the Kimball. And the whole thing just goes together so beautifully. You can't really tell the Buzard from the Kimball stomps. Everything all. just blends beautifully. You can just play any genre of music in church music that, that you would want to play. You can play hymns, accompany singers, choirs. It's just all very easily done with this organ. Of course, we have a new console. Yes. So, so the console is brand new. This is the antiphonal, and uh, at the time we didn't have enough money to have a whole new set of stops for the antiphonal division. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, Mr. Buzard has already figured out what stops <laughs> he <laughs> thinks we should have, and those stops will go in the balcony. Uh -huh. And why waste an entire keyboard? Of course. So what Mr. Buzard did is he made it so that I could bring the grate down to the antiphonal. I could bring the swell down to the antiphonal. And then he also has black stops and red stops on the grate. So I can actually uh, couple down to the anti antiphonal three different uh, levels of stops. I can mm -hmm. uh, couple just these black stops that you see here from the grate. I can couple just the red stops from the grate, and I can couple the swell. Well, and I would say the, the really neat thing about the way that they have structured the great division with the red and the black labeled stops is that it in effect gives you two, or uh, divides the great division into two divisions 
that, that are married beautifully together. Um, and so it has to be mentioned that that also carries down into the expression. So mm -hmm. how, how is that separated? Is it is red on, on the petal or how, how does that work? So the red that you see on the grate is completely under expression. Okay. And you know, we, we even have this big Tremba stop. That's a, that's under expression. So even though it's a really loud reed that mm -hmm. Mr. Buzard put in there, I can shut that down. Yeah. So I, I can make it much softer. So only the red of the grate is under expression. Okay. And then all of the swell is also under expression. Mm -hmm. So this is the swell expression petal right here in the okay. middle. And then this one is the great Fantastic. expression. Then this is the crescendo pedal. So Tina, tell me, um, what do you like about this instrument? What is it that you try to sneak in as much as possible? Um, or what do you save just for special occasions? I guess one of my favorite stops on this organ is the oboe. Mm -hmm. I just think it has a gorgeous oboe. Another stop that I truly love from the original Kimball is the Undamaris. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you put that with the dulcimer, it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful sound. Mm. Another thing I love is having a first open diapason and a second open diapason. Okay. Can you, can you show I, us how they're different? I must say, <laughs> I love that very much because there's times when accompanying the choir, perhaps we don't have a whole lot of singers that show up that particular Sunday morning. Yes. So uh, if the choir is getting really, really big at one point, you only have, uh, not your standard 35 singers, well, this second open diapason will be a much better decision than <laughs> the first. Sure. So here is the second open diapason. And here's the first.
So you, oh. you can see there's a big difference in uh, volume between the two. So I together. find... <laughs> I'm I, just curious. Sure, together it's... I find that I'm just almost constantly using that second. The second. Mm -hmm. when I, especially if I'm accompanying the choir. Uh, it's great. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's not going to be too loud for the choir. Sure. Sure. But yet it still gives me a diapason. Well, that's you know, very nice. Yeah. Nice, nice diapason. Um, the tromba, uh, that's, that's really nice. Okay. You know, having this, this is a really huge reed. Okay. And so, you know, if I'm playing something really, really loud, mm -hmm. it's great heaven. expression so oh it is oh that's great see I just put it under expression I just closed the box oh, that's nice and then it's, you have a 12 8 and 4 mm -hmm. read mm. in the pedal it's nice to have them at is it the same uh, rank just at mm -hmm. different octaves yeah that's really nice to have. And then it's it's nice to have a double open diapason 16. Yes. So is that what's what's in front of us here? It might be. <laughs> it might be. Let's see. Let's see if we can figure it out. Oh yes. So those are all speaking. Yeah, wow. This is These are the original 1897 pipes. Yes, So yes. when the organ was put in in 1897, there was stenciling on it. And uh, the stenciling kind of went its course and it was no longer fashionable mm. in the mid 20th century to have this beautiful stenciling. And so at the time, the church, th Perhaps this church had just had the, the walls painted and they thought, well, the stenciling doesn't go with the paint. Let's just take the same paint and just paint over this facade of pipes. But somewhere along the way, some historian had found an old photograph of this organ that showed the original stenciling on there. So we knew underneath the pipes Mm -hmm. was the stenciling. Wow. And so when the pipes were taken out of here in 2006 to the Broussard Organ Company, mm -hmm. they were told that the stenciling was underneath the paint. Wow. And so they were able to figure out the pattern uh -huh. that was on the pipes. I it see. was kind of like a shadowing. They could, it was, the shadow of the original pattern was still on the pipes. So when they took the paint off, they could figure out the pattern. And then that pattern was sent to a wonderful artist. I believe she's down in North Carolina. She was given uh, the design. And uh, it took her quite a while to get, to get these painted. I see. It's, uh, it's on the story I was telling you okay. uh, from the from diapason. The okay. It tells you how long. Because she's written her own little article about, this. about wow. uh, painting these pipes. On the gold uh, leaf. I, yeah, that's 24 karat gold leaf up there. So hopefully it'll never go out of fashion because uh, <laughs> the first time I saw these pipes in 2007, I just thought, spectacular! It's just spectacular! It is spectacular. Especially if you're coming up the center stairs right? and you come and you just see those... <laughs> And they're just amazing. Yeah, it is really lovely. Just amazing.
As Tina plays, I'll highlight a few of the inner workings of this instrument, but what's really notable here is how the Buzard firm completely rebuilt the winding system and gives this organ new breath and new life. Mm -hmm. 